Hi, folks. I'm Stephen W. Long. This is The Writing Life. And if you've watched along uh, as, we, as we do the shows, you'll recognize my guest today, Phil Guzzo. Uh Phil's been on before in, in sort of wearing various hats. Uh, you may know Phil as the digital video specialist here at the mm -hmm. studio, as well as... Uh, a training coordinator. Training coordinator, okay. Kind of do a little outreach yeah. and producer support and all that. Okay, all right. So lots of stuff. Yeah. We're going to talk about uh, your presentation or your class uh, on, on screenwriting today. Yeah, it's not so much a class as it's, uh, it's the, the, the uh, we have this film club that meets here at MCM TV. Okay. Uh, it's called the Second Saturday Film Club, although we don't always meet on the second Saturday. <laughs> it varies depending on the, the needs of the club. And right now, uh, in, in the, the past couple of years, we've gone through a process of kind of workshopping scripts yeah. and people would bring in a script and we'd kind of read through it and talk it over and, and give notes and they'd go back and adjust it and come back and we haven't had uh, a lot of scripts come in that way um, cuz you, you have not no we have not okay. we've had a couple and <clears throat> and and they've been they've been good we've lucked out in the last couple of years we had some really good scripts that yeah. people provided um, but this year I kind of wanted to give it a little juice and, and maybe stimulate some of the other club members that maybe felt intimidated about um, okay. writing a script. So I thought maybe we could, I thought we would do some workshop, a series of workshops on screenwriting through the club. So that's what right. we're doing right now. We are starting uh, next week on the, the 25th, I think, um, of January um, to do a log line. We're going to work on log lines for... Okay. Uh, for a short film specific, this will be screenwriting specific to short films, which is a little different than. Okay, so a couple of things. Of course, I know what a logline is, but right. for, <laughs> if somebody didn't, what is that? It's basically the the TV guide description okay. of your movie. It's kind of um, it it's kind of encapsulates the whole movie, but in one or two sentences. Okay, um, would that sort of be the same as an elevator speech? I think an elevator pitch is a little bit more extensive. Is it okay? Um, uh, but the log line is should draw people in, and and get them. Oh, that sounds good. Tell me more. Well, I wondered. Okay, and then so, you give the elevator pitch. Okay, so the but the purpose of a of a log line is what? Just so you can get a handle on your story and what okay. your story is going to be about, because you you want to start. Or it's one way to start with the core of the story, right. and you know, and the and the and if you have a really clear log line, yeah, it really lays out how the the script is going to go. I was thinking of it as a mission statement in a business, kind of, uh, yeah. So that, uh, and I used to think that was so dumb. Well, of course, the mission statement of a business is to make money, mm -hmm. but really, if you define what you're there for, it sort of keeps you on track. And it sounds like maybe the that's what the log line is. Yes, the log line is one part that will keep you on track. Okay. Um, the other part I find that keeps you on track is, of course, having an outline so that when you're about three quarters of the way through, you don't get lost. Okay. And I think that's the difference between um, screenwriting and maybe novel writing. I've heard novel writing is, you, is, is akin to driving across the United States at night with your headlights on. And right. you can only see as far as your headlights. Right, right, right. Whereas screenwriting, a lot of times you really want to have it mapped out because there's, it's a very specific type of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't have it mapped out, it's a lot easier to get lost. So although I know okay. there's, for every writer, there's a different way to write something. I was going to say, and I'm give a little pitch for myself here, or or for the Terrawalk Creative Writing Festival. Uh, I think it's April 18th this year. And I'm going to be doing a presentation, and the title of which is "The Novel as Process," and talk about that exact thing. Oh, okay. So, and you know, to start things off, there's as many approaches as there are authors. So, right. But you know, some guidelines to to, yeah. to get you going. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of things that interest me. One of the things, I, and and I want to mention this, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. But you've written a variety of kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, screenwriting is its own thing, mm -hmm. 
And now you talked about short film is within, it's like a subset within yeah. that. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what, what makes it different, how do you approach it? Well, uh, a, a full-length film traditionally has a three-act structure. Right. Um, you have your, your opening act where generally it's, everything is set up and then the, the, the turning point into act two is where a character or characters or the situation demands uh, a, 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 a decision being made. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go get that bad guy, you know, and right. then that's the decision. Right. I can't take it anymore. And, right. and we, then you move into act two and then there's a whole series of ups and downs and roller coaster ride and then, and then there's another turning point into act three and I'm not exactly up on all the specifics of structure. Right. Um, because um, I don't necessarily think you need to know all of it. It's sometimes a useful roadmap. Um, but as far as a, like the co comparison to that, so there's there's a, this all this up and down and 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 you kind of go through this whole journey with your character right. um, to the end, to the climax, and then the end. Whereas with a short film, you still go on a journey with the character, mm -hmm. but it's more like, um, and this is from my wife. I have to give her credit. Um, it's more like a joke with a punchline at okay, the end. Okay, sure. It's it's not necessarily funny or necessarily a big twist, but I mean, but, but there it is, is a, a conclusion. But it's a conclusion, and yeah. a lot of times the, there is a twist element right. to it. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a short film, and um, a a lot of the other part that makes a really good short film, I have found in my observation is not a lot of dialogue, that it's actually mostly really? action. And I now think that, that surprises me. Yeah, well, I think that's largely because a lot of short films are being made by amateur filmmakers and they don't have access to really good actors. Okay. So um, uh, a lot of it is done through action and, and just and, that's and, interesting. And kind of... Um, I don't know if emoting, because if you have an amateur actor, I don't know if emoting is the right word, because they, they'll have, you know, they maybe won't, don't have the skills to do that. But right. there is this phenomenon that happens when you <clears throat> juxtapose images on screen with a person with just even a neutral expression. It makes it look like they are, you know, emoting to various degrees. Okay. Of, but, you know. That, that, so uh, that's a, a great observation on your part and exactly the opposite of what I was going to suggest. Oh, yeah? And that is that a screenplay is dialogue. It is dialogue, and a lot of it is told through dialogue, but if you do too much dialogue, then it becomes a play. A play really is dialogue. Okay, sure. A play is all about the dialogue and the, the, the characters and that. Dialogue in a screenplay just serves to get from A to B. Okay. But if you can get from A to B without using dialogue, so much the better. Um, and, and so now that you've said that, I'm thinking of, um, well, one of my favorite all-time movies is uh, Ryan's Daughter. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? And, I don't know and, if I've seen that, actually. And, uh, and I'll, I'll think of the director in a minute here. But some of the scenery is breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's the same director who did uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai or Bridge on the River Kwai. Oh, okay. And so, uh, well, like I say, I'll think about it. But I think, I don't know if this is, I'm not a, a aficionado, but it seemed to me that his approach was uh, obviously visual yeah, as opposed to talking heads or something. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have kind of extremes in filmmaking. You have My Dinner with Andre, which okay. is all talking. And then you have, you know, a lot yeah. of uh, more, not necessarily action-driven, but visual-driven right. films. Yeah. That a lot can be told in, in just the visuals. And I suppose the, the scenery you, you pick, uh, the, scenery the, the you, way you shoot it. The scenery you pick, the actions of the characters, right. the, the where they're going, who, you know. You can tell, uh, I mean, film started as a silent medium. Sure. So I think that's that's where its roots are yeah. and that's the purest form of of the medium is when it's when it's just uh visuals on screen it's the visual and i was thinking yes silent in terms of dialogue 
but uh, not silent because didn't they have their orchestra, a live orchestra they had right there? Yes, mu there's music. Yeah. That's the whole thing. There's, there's music, there's sound effects. All of that also tells a story. Right. So. Now, uh, given, well, a couple of things, but given your, your budget or somebody on a, a small scale like this, uh, can you do music? Yeah, there's lots of music to be okay. had on, out there. There's local composers that will do it for just just for fun or okay. for little money. Um, you can get you can hire people on the internet. This is the world of of the that's, interwebs. Yeah, that's your right. Yeah. Um, on the interwebs, there is there's countless websites now where composers will put up. Um, uh, music for free to use really? with just attribution and, <clears throat> and the biggest one and the guy that kind of started that all is this guy uh, Kevin McLeod and he, he has a website called Incompetech and most most amateur filmmakers will know who Incompetech is but he has hundreds of pieces of really? all types of genres and all moods and expressions that you can just go and download and just have to give him credit at the end um, but yeah it, what a world we live in. I know. I, I think so. Uh, you may, I know you're right outside the booth uh, every time I do this. <laughs> We've had a, a woman talk about cover art uh, that she contracts with somebody who is literally a world away. Yes. And, and they've never met. I'm not even sure they speak the same language, but they convey or she conveys what, yeah. what feeling she wants to convey. And. Uh, yeah, you can go on Fiverr and find somebody. To five, do. Yeah, Fiverr. They, there's artists, musicians, yeah. voice actors, you name it. You can painters, um, sculptors. Yeah, just all, any kind of creative service, even probably some uncreative services. Well, um, <laughs> you could you can find on Fiverr for yeah. all sorts of a whole range of prices. Sure, from five dollars and up. Yeah, it it reminds me. Uh, uh, I think it was Jim Carrey uh, who talked about <clears throat> making a bad movie, mm -hmm. and so you know, and uh, but didn't that ruin, ruin your career? And he goes, well, obviously not, because the 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 bad soundtrack, or the poorly written self-published book, or the bad film, they go away. They, it's they, kind you know, of a self-selected. Yeah, pe people don't follow it. They don't yeah. watch it. I mean, it's a little difficult because it, it does make it more difficult when things are so accessible because the noise level is a lot higher with, out there with mm -hmm. just like everybody putting stuff out on mm -hmm. the internet. I guess we're kind of getting off topic here, but not at all. Um, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, then you know, so uh, the the challenge, of course, for filmmakers and composers in that is uh, to to rise above that. But as one uh, one a TV producer I talked to. Um, quite extensively at one point said talent will out basically basically if you have talent and you're consistent and you put it out there it will find an audience eventually I would almost say that to, to reverse those in the sense of consistency and then talent and yeah I, and actually I think that's probably true because we you can see people around town even you say gee that musician is just fabulous why isn't she Right. Uh, a big star. Right. Well, part of it is the breaks, I think, but part of it is consistency. It's yeah. just uh, single-mindedness. Minded, yeah, and I think the, um, the other thing that is a factor, and I know this is a factor, and my wife and I have talked about this a lot, um, that, uh, that people who are talented, who have maybe a little bit of um, aptitude for something or, or mm -hmm. talent for something, I, w I don't want to say they're lazy, but they, sometimes to them it feels like I think that maybe they are just not good enough because it comes easier to them for something, whereas someone who it doesn't come easy to is going to work a lot harder to get their stuff out there and get their stuff yeah. known because yeah. they, they know they have to work at it, whereas someone who maybe music comes easy to or writing comes easy to right. will be like, well, I just wrote this I can't be any good yeah. even though other it people, wasn't hard it wasn't hard yeah. so I, ca I can't imagine it's any good yeah. um, I, so. I actually know people like that and I think uh, if you look at successful people uh, often they came from difficult circumstances 
And, yeah, and I and it, I think it's almost goes back a, to the J, the Johnny Cash thing. That yeah, we were talking about earlier. It's it's almost a detriment when something comes easy, yeah. or or not even that, but when when your life is comfortable, because I yes. think maybe you don't strive as much because you're comfortable. Yeah, it could be, or it could be because you um, uh, you don't have as many limitations. And uh, according to well, Orson no, Welles, something... the absence of limitations is the enemy of creativity. Okay. Um, you know, and if you think about it, um, if you have if, if you have more limitations on you, you're going to be a lot more creative to get something done. Sure. Than just oh, I got so much money, or I got all this time, and right. um, and you just kind of. I think uh, is it uh, Shakespeare in Love, uh, the movie. And they accomplish something, and somebody says, well, uh, "How did you do that?" I don't know. It's a miracle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what happens yeah. when you're when you're up against the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, for as far as the the short films, I think that all comes into play with short films, and yeah. that when we when we're writing them, it's you don't want to. You don't necessarily want to limit your story idea to what you have on hand, but you also do kind of have to keep that in the back of your mind that in order to get this, if you want to actually get it made, right, you're right, gonna, right. you have to keep in, in, you have to keep it within your world of what you have available to so you. So I, you've anticipated one of my questions, ah. which is, which is a great segue. Uh, when you're writing, and let's say when you you yourself, right. or maybe this is what you'll uh, uh, par, uh, talk to your uh, group about, and that is, d do you self-limit in the sense of, well, I'd love to have a scene in the mountains, but we can't get to the mountains. Uh, or, you know, I don't have an actor of that uh, capability, so I'm going to have to rewrite this and... and uh, let let the audience see this in a different way, and I, I I don't know, I know we're really jumping around here, but it, if you're developing a product, one of the the approaches is to write down what would be the perfect product, and I read an example. Right. Well, it would be if you're if you're designing a ballpoint pen, it would be a pen that never runs out of ink. Well, if you're thinking the next step up you won't write that down because pens do run out of ink. Right. But you want to start with the ideal. What would be yeah. what would be perfect? And then once you get all that down, say, okay, now you go into the, the prototype yeah. or the factory yeah. or something. Now what's realistic? Could you write like that? Well yeah, I think that's that that's that you can. I think that's I think that's probably how you should write. Second draft maybe is or is you should because out of the necessity, again, out of the necessity to get right. a spaceship flying or right. or a scene in the mountains or whatever, you will have to be creative in either a how to get that on right. on on film or how to show how to have that same scene but in a different context that works within your film. Right. So it does. If you do limit yourself too early on or too much, yeah, it's um, you may lose out on some really genius moments. Right. Because some of the things that have happened in my films that I've done wouldn't have happened if I had limited myself. I'd be like, yeah. but it was because in the mo because when I had to go back and be realistic about what I had to do, I had to get really creative on how right. to do the shot. And actually, I was thinking about you particularly because you've been in so many aspects of film. And I think, and I don't know this, but I, I, I suspect that particularly an amateur uh, starting out, if they, uh, they weren't in production, they were only in writing. Well, they, they might just let the, their imagination go. But if you right. were in production, you might say, mm, I'd love to do that, but I really can't. Right. They're, they're definitely when you get to the production phase of things, yeah. you have to kind of put your producer hat on and yeah. say, okay, we can't do that. You know, that, that would... That would cost more than, than the entire film itself just right. to do that one shot, or sure. you know, too difficult, or we don't have the crew or the actors to get, pull it off. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, and, and a lot of and and a lot of times too, when you finally get to that point where you're getting actors, you might want to pull it back and rewrite it for the specific actors you have too, right. 
to the, their cadence and the way they work. Right. So. So that's it's a fluid uh, situation. You you write it and knowing that maybe it's not solid, that this is kind of a starting point. Yes. <clears throat> you want to get it as finished as possible before you get start producing it, start actually running mm -hmm. the production. But I think once you put on that producer hat, then you really need to start thinking realistically of how or how are you going to get this film made. Yeah. I think it, I, that I heard a story about Spielberg, that, and it might have even been Jaws, that it was so expensive to make, but <clears throat> they saved money by laying out each scene and, and crafting it uh, so that it would work one time through. Right. Rather than shooting something saying, oh, nuts, let's try it this way instead. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, the, that's the other thing, too, is um, there's different ways to make the, shoot a scene sure. um, like that. Whereas, uh, you know, you can shoot it and get what they call a lot of they get coverage. So there's a lot of, you get shots from all different angles. You right. try different things. And then the editor takes it and kind of crafts the scene in the editing room. What looks the best. What looks the best, yeah. what works. Or more straight ahead where you you actually shoot it specifically how it's going to be put together. Yeah. Um, Sequentially, you mean? or No, but you'd shoot exactly the scenes you need. You wouldn't get a lot of extra footage. Right. Um, so you wouldn't be able to choose different angles of different cameras. I know a lot of films, Hollywood films these days, they shoot with three or four cameras on right. set all at once. Um, so they shoot, they do all the coverage all at once because it's, they, they, it's everything's digital now. Yeah. So they just roll it all and, and then the editor gets to pick and yeah. choose. Yeah. So it, it I, certainly makes for a faster production yeah. to do it that way. In uh, Gone with the Wind, I heard that w when Atlanta was burning, they could only do that once. So they had cameras everywhere. Yes. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> yes. And certainly even back then when you had a big special effects shot, yeah. you'd get, you'd rent all the cameras available right. and, and you'd roll them all. Yeah. yeah. So something I wanted to ask you, and this, because yeah. I know you're working on a graphic novel. Yeah. It's kind of in the, in the background. That's got to be, a, 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 I would think, a different process than writing a screenplay. Yeah, it I, is. If I'm right, can you describe what's different? Well, the thing for me is I started with a script and I was kind of naive about it. I'm, this is a process I'm learning along the way. And then I thought, oh, it'll just be like a storyboard. It's just a storyboard, right? Board, right, 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 right. Just boom, boom, boom. Well, it's no. A graphic novel and comic and sequential art is a lot different in that you have to really pick the frame that tells the story for a series, you know, that can tell us, basically it tells a series of shots that mm -hmm. you would have in uh, a storyboard. A storyboard might have, you know, the guy walking in, the inn, and then, you know, wherever the camera right, tracks, right. whereas in a graphic novel, you really have to use a lot more shorthand to get someone into a scene and right. out of a scene or in a fight or, or anything that happens or dialogue. Um, uh, so it's been a learning process for me to kind of think about writing. And when I write, I tend to see it in my head and the you actors bet. act in my head and, and it all comes out and then I just basically am transcribing. So with a graphic novel, I'm having to think, okay, what would be a good frame? What would be a good e image to, yeah. to depict this moment and what would be a good image that goes next to it to depict the next moment right so my uh, most important writing teacher <clears throat> in novel writing talked about the telling detail mm -hmm. so when you're describing a scene or a person or uh, you know building a uh, characteristic or something um, you can't say everything that would be terribly boring Right. So you have to pick what she called the telling detail, and it sounds like that's what that is. It's kind of like, it is a little bit like that. You have to yeah. pick the, the moment, to, the, right, the right frame right. to depict. Yeah. To, so you can, you can tell, and then you have to depict it from this one to this time, and then you don't want to lose your geography or lose your audience of right. where you are and what's yeah. happening. So. Yeah. 
I had taken a class. It was a, he was actually a guest speaker at a class, a writing class I had. And uh, it turns out that he was the guy who wrote the original Smurfs. He worked for <laughs> Hanna, Hanna Barbera. Yeah. But he'd, he'd done uh, live action films and so uh -huh. on. And it was talking to us from his perspective, and we were short story and novel writers, but he was something else. And he <clears throat> said, you know, I don't envy you. Uh, if you have somebody, your character's at the window, and, and then they go to the kitchen, you've got to write them there. You've got to get them. <laughs> yeah. He says, I just cut, <laughs> cut and they're in the kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, I think it's interesting how different these are. And in fact, you were talking about the difference between a full-length film and a short film. Yeah. And it, and it reminded me of uh, Joseph Campbell, you know, the hero's mm -hmm. journey and so on, and how you, you start in the ordinary world, that's right. act one. Then you're in the special world, and then you return to the ordinary world. That's act three. Right. But you are, you're a short story. I mean, that, I could equate right. it to that. And I like the analogy of a, of a punchline. Yeah. yeah. I think that there are different ways to do a short film, too. I mean, you can have a more extensive short film that has more of a, more of a traditional story An arc, arc yeah. more. Um, but I think the best ones are the ones that really kind of do a little turn at the end and, and kind of yeah. give you a punchline. Which reminds me of O. Henry. Yes, yeah, he's kind, kind the of classic. A, right. You know, but not every film has to be the gift of the Magi. Right. You yeah. know, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but it, did, it should have some kind of element like that. Anyway, that's kind of where I'm at right yeah. now. It's kind of as I move through these creative worlds uh -huh. and work more in films, you kind of learn more and more and yeah. kind of figure things out as you go. And Now, in, um, in your class, yeah. uh, you're, you're going to be the uh, facilitator. Yeah, kind of the facilitator, yeah. yeah. And I know you've been, I think you've been studying up on this. and Yeah, I've, <clears throat> I've, I've taken tons of screenwriting classes. I've been through the UCLA screenwriting program. Okay. Um, so... Uh, I, uh, I think I have something to offer to, to students yeah. and to people. We're close to out of time, okay. but um, would you, uh, is this open to anybody or? Uh, yeah, if, if someone is interested, um, they can contact me through MCM. Right. And um, we're, we're meeting probably every other week okay. and kind of going through different the different elements of uh, short films. And yeah. hopefully everybody that participates is going to, come in with it, we'll be able to finish up with a short script. Right. And so is, does this have a time period? Like, does it run three months? Yeah, or? we're going to do probably the first through uh, March or April. We'll probably run. Okay. Just, I'm not, I don't have a, a distinct end date. It's kind of depend on the needs Actually of the class. Actually pretty short, though. We're, yeah, we're, we're it's, in the it's middle just, of January. Yeah, it's just kind of going to be uh, to get everybody to a, a, a first draft of a, of a short film. Okay. So, yeah. And I know, I think you and I have talked before about this, Bob Zonizer, who did do yes. the first screenplay, talked about what a collaborative effort this is. Yes. And I, th and I think he's talking about, and maybe you too, the whole film. But mm -hmm. even as a part of that, the script writing, when you get critiqued, when you get feedback, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's part of that give and take. Yeah. Yeah, and even Bob went through when he brought his his short. It was a short story he brought right. in to start with, and he wrote it as a screenplay, or he wrote it as a play. I guess it was a short play. Right. And so we gave him we 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 workshopped his script into more of a, a screenplay. Yeah. And then um, and then he had to go through the different steps of that too. I know he was so pleased with yeah. The, it was great. It the was collaboration. Great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Phil Gutso, thank you so much. Well, this was fun you, for me. I, I hope it was for you, Yeah, too. it was good. It was good. Oh, all right. I, I love it. I've been on the show. Uh, folks, that's it. Uh, tune in again uh, to The Writing Life. Uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but, uh, again, I will be doing a, a, a presentation at the Terroir Creative uh, Writing Festival, and that's April 18th, 2020. So yeah. we'll probably look on YouTube and see this 10 years from now and think, what the heck was he talking about? <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. And
think? We done? I don't know. You guys want to do one yeah, just with yourself? Do as long as they think the we're done, no, they got no, enough. No. They got no. enough. So they got enough. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Let's go have. Let's go lunch. I'm, oh. a, I'm <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I can use a bite too.